To make this video, I went through a whole bunch of online resources and textbooks that I read and enjoyed or that came highly recommended by others. It took a while, but I narrowed it down to a curriculum that teaches you quantum mechanics rigorously without too many mathematical prerequisites. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to buy all these. The recommended reading for this course is either free or cheaply available. Hi, my name is Mithuna and I'm a PhD student studying quantum computing. But even though I do quantum stuff now, when I first learnt about it in university, I hated it. And I ended up switching from physics to maths because of it. But I had some time off and decided to give it another go. So I read a bunch of textbooks and realised that quantum mechanics is actually super, super exciting. It's just that the way that you're introduced to it in university usually is kind of rubbish. And a lot of popularizations of quantum mechanics are kind of useless because they just rely on analogies. But there are some good resources in between. And so I made this video to recommend some of them to you. Let's start at a book that I would recommend to everyone from complete beginners to physics pros. It's volume three of the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Standard quantum textbooks start with the maths of quantum mechanics, but Feynman recognized that you need to start with the intuition. If you learn the intuition first, it's easier to learn the maths, but the other way around doesn't really work. You might be thinking, but quantum mechanics isn't intuitive, and that's true, but a good physicist has some intuition for it nevertheless, and Feynman was of course very good. So we're very lucky to have these lectures. And even better, they're free online. The link, as well as what I think are the essential chapters, are in the blog post linked in the description below. If you don't want to do any more beyond this, then no problem. Reading that alone will give you a very good flavour for quantum mechanics. But if you're willing to do a little bit more serious study, then it really is possible to learn this subject to a very high standard on your own, even without a lot of maths background. See, the usual approach to quantum physics uses loads of calculus and can be a bit intimidating. And even worse, it's really opaque, so it's hard to understand what's quantum because it all just looks like equation manipulation. But the way I'm going to suggest uses something called linear algebra instead, which is, trust me, way easier and generalizes to things like quantum computing much better anyway. To learn that math background, I recommend a few selected chapters from Gilbert Strang's Introduction to Linear Algebra. Some of you might already know that topic, but it could be worthwhile to do those chapters anyway because I find that that material is often not the main emphasis of a standard linear algebra course. And that's why I started making these videos about linear algebra here. I wanted the videos to specifically cover what you need for quantum mechanics. So if you're not sure if you have enough background, Watch those videos and see whether you feel super comfortable with those ideas already or not. If you decide to get the book, then try buy a secondhand copy of an old edition. It's a really popular textbook, so there's loads of old ones floating about. And there's also free lecture recordings by the author. Anyway, that's the maths out of the way, now for quantum textbooks. I'd recommend two. The first is The Theoretical Minimum by Leonard Susskind and Art Friedman. This book is based on a lecture series that Susskind did for people who wanted to learn quantum mechanics who didn't necessarily have a physics background. But it's brilliant even if you are a physics major, because it includes some helpful discussions before diving into the maths of each topic. Even though it assumes very little knowledge and looks like a novel, don't be fooled. This is a serious textbook that, theoretically, will teach you as much quantum stuff as a typical undergraduate physics degree. That's why I don't recommend you read it on its own because it goes from basic to pro very fast. Try reading it with A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics by Townsend. It's one of the few mainstream introductory quantum textbooks that I can really get behind. It's inspired by the Feynman Lectures, as well as one of my favourite quantum textbooks, Modern Quantum Mechanics by Sakurai. But Sakurai is basically a graduate textbook, so it's very detailed, and the Feynman lectures are not really detailed enough, so this book captures the core ideas of both at just the right level. It covers a lot of the same ground as the theoretical minimum, but in a different way, so I think they complement each other. What I found was when I was learning quantum mechanics, 
it's great to see the same thing explained multiple ways. So those are the core textbooks. There's a bunch more I have for advanced topics that you might be interested in reading after these three or if you've done quantum mechanics before, but I'm going to talk about them in the blog post instead of here. How should you use these books though? It's really easy to trick yourself into thinking that you understand maths or physics when you just read and reread a textbook and look at worked out solutions. But as Scott Young explains in his new book about learning, what's really happening is you start to feel familiar with the text, but that's very different from understanding it. In his book, he gives a whole bunch of different methods to get around this and other issues you might get stuck on when you're learning something on your own. I seriously enjoyed the book, so I decided to ask Scott what tips he'd most recommend for you guys for this specific project. Here's what he said. Well, the most important thing is to just do a lot of practice. I think that a lot of people get the idea that the main way that you learn something like physics is by attending the lectures and reading the textbook. But I think that the main way you learn it is actually doing the practice problems. The first reason this is more effective is something known as retrieval. So retrieval is the idea that if you actually have to practice remembering something from your head, you'll be much more likely to retain it than if you just passively review it looking over your notes. The second reason is that physics is a skill. Just as you wouldn't learn to ride a bicycle by reading a book on learning to ride a bicycle, but by actually riding a bicycle, similarly, if you want to be able to do physics problems, you actually have to do physics problems. Quick interruption here. I couldn't agree more with this point, and so in the blog post, I've marked what problems you should be doing with the texts I recommended, including for the Feynman lectures. So the Feynman technique is a method that uh, I developed about 10 years ago and it was named after my real inspiration in learning hard things, Richard Feynman. And so the method is really simple. Basically, you just take a sheet of paper and you write down the thing that you don't understand at the top. So it could be understanding torque or understanding the infinite well problem in quantum mechanics. And then you go through there and try to explain the problem to someone else as if you're teaching it. So the thing that this is really helpful for is that, first of all, it takes all of your thoughts, all of your confusions and puts them on the paper. So suddenly when you have things on the paper, you can sometimes figure out the answer that you were missing. Oh, this is what I didn't understand just by putting it on the page. The second reason that this is valuable is that it allows you to slow down your process through a particularly difficult point. So a lot of physics is really confusing and it can just be a situation where you're like, I don't get it and you throw your hands up. And that's not very helpful because just I don't get it doesn't really give you any obvious road forward. Whereas if you slow it down, you can start by asking yourself very specific questions. What exactly don't you understand about it? And when you have very specific questions, it's much easier to look for very specific answers. If you want more helpful tips about learning from Scott, I highly recommend his book, Ultra Learning. The Feynman technique especially resonated with me because that's how I learned quantum mechanics. I would read textbooks and then when I felt like I'd got it, I would try and explain them in YouTube videos, these YouTube videos, and that's how my channel started. The thing is, when you're trying to explain something to someone, there is no hiding what you don't understand. And also, when you want to convey an idea to someone, you want to give them the core intuition and so it forces you to come up with that core intuition. Once you feel like you understand something, try and explain it, but try and explain it without any jargon or difficult equations. What I found doing this is that it's a lot harder than it seems. Like when I would be going through a textbook, I would feel like I understood everything and I could follow all the arguments, but as soon as I had to explain it without the mathematics, I realized that I didn't actually know what was going on underneath of the equations. Now, if any of you do end up making videos or writing articles, or in general, if you just end up doing this project, I would love to hear about it. And so I've finally made a subreddit for this channel where you can keep me up to date. Links for that and everything else below. But now I want to ask you a question. If you are planning to do any of this, then what's your motivation? What do you want to learn? And also, what do you foresee as the biggest stumbling blocks? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try and update the blog post to address those. Okay, thanks for watching.